current project that I'm working on involves doing a lot of line drawings of various native plants and critters, which you can see here. I've gotten most of them done. I have a few more left. I wanted to talk about use of reference material, which I had to use a lot of for this because it was based on actual plants and things and they have to correspond to the reality rather than being the fantasy art that I sometimes create and do just from my head. But even so, when I am working with fantasy art, I, I use reference as well occasionally for that. And it is situational. It depends on what it is I'm painting and drawing. And sometimes I integrate various elements from reference into what I am creating. But um, I wanted to talk about then reference material here and how closely to stick to it or not when you are working. And in the case of these little ink drawings that I did of lichens and mushrooms and feathers and plants and pine cones and things, I was able to gather some of these from life and draw from that and others I've had to use photos of my own which I was lucky enough to have a good stockpile of. And finally, the last few, which were things that I have not yet had the chance to see in person, I, I did have to rely on Google Images to find appropriate reference pictures. But whether or not I'm using my own or Google image search photos, what I like to do is I like to gather images from various angles of the same thing. So in this case, this is a Douglas Iris. It is from my own garden that I took a photo of last year. And fortunately, since I did a botanical painting of this, I have these reference photos handy. And I plan on using this to draw something roughly in this angle. It is going to be a little bit more stylized because I'm drawing with ink. And it's not going to necessarily stay true entirely to what is here. I just need it to have the form of the iris and to have all the features that are necessary for the identification of it. I'm going to be starting with something approximately at the angle of what this photo is at. And the reason why I like to have several different photos is because then I can, if I, if I decide to change the way one leaf is or one petal is uh, situated, it is something that I have alternate references to be able to check out and see from different angles. And I am going to be drawing with ink, pen and ink for this, because these are ink line drawings. The other benefit of having multiple photos of the same item from different angles is that there are times when light is coming at some strange angle and you can't really tell what it is you're looking at because the shadows are just not adding up to something that makes sense visually. And so being able to see it from an alternate angle will help you put that odd bit into perspective at times. So I especially like being able to do that with plants. And this is why I, I like to work from my own reference much more than I like to just find reference online because I am able, because I know at this point what kind of things I look for in my reference photos, 
what kind of angles and what kind of variation I want in my pictures in order to be able to properly depict the elements that I am going for in painting or drawing. And so I'm, I'm able to get all the necessary material for myself. Frequently when you go on the internet and you just try to find some picture and uh, you'll, you'll find it, but it'll be either at a really low resolution or lighting is odd or you just can't make out some section that is folded under or just hidden behind something else and it can get really frustrating. But that's, that's how you work. That's how you have to work a lot of the times because we can't get reference for every single thing that we're drawing in person. Especially as a fantasy artist, a lot of this is going to be coming from our heads. And so then what it means is that you need to be able to extrapolate. You need to be able to look for similar shapes and forms in other creatures or in other plants, other formations of landscape, and extrapolate from that how the thing that you want to paint and draw is going to work out, given what you do know of things that you can set your eyes on. See, here's a little bit of what I was talking about where it's hard to tell what's going on with this. If this is two petals here or one, and I think if I look at some of my other pictures, you can see better the way these inner petals are structured. So there are these large outer lobes, and then there's these tall, thin ones. There's three of those, and then there's these shorter, thin ones. So it's actually got nine petals in here. And you can see it a little bit better over here as well. Here's the, the big, larger ones. Here's the inner, tall ones, and here is the inner short one. And so I'm going back to the reference from the angle that I want, but now keeping in mind what it is that I'm looking at, I can make my drawing conform to that. And especially when I'm translating something that is in full color, full color photograph into just black and white line work it becomes that much more tricky then to maintain the proper uh, construction and, and to, to, to really convince your viewer of what you're seeing there, what they are seeing there. So using reference then is really just about figuring out what part of your picture you want to focus on and show your audience, what parts are important, what parts are crucial to convey what you want the person to see. Now also I'm making another change here. This large petal is coming up way over there, and I'm gonna move it down over to here in my view, I think, because of the way I've shifted some of these other petals for visibility, I think I'm gonna to have to shift that one as well. thickening the edges to add more weight to some of those lines. And the final petal.
And then the final element that I'm changing in my drawing here is that all of my plants and things, they're viewed from the top down because they are lying on a forest floor. And so I have to shift this as well because I didn't want to do the top down view of my iris because it's not very recognizable as an iris from this viewpoint. I did want something not quite profile either, but something from a three quarters viewed from three quarters above view of it. But I do want to cut it off so that it's not one that is growing, but one that is lying down. So I do need to add this part of it. And again, this is something that I'm extrapolating then from this viewpoint, from the side view that I have as well as my previous knowledge of the way this plant is put together because I did a very detailed botanical painting of it last year. Okay. And then I'm gonna just have my stem broken off over here. And there's my Douglas Iris. I pretty much used that process with all of the reference that I had for the rest of this project. Some of it, like I said, were images that I had taken of my on my own, and others were from life. A few things that were in the proper season to access. And then there were a few of them that I had to go look for outside reference for. But essentially I do the same thing with all of them. I, I use them more as a way of understanding how the thing is put together, how the various angles and views of the plant or creature Are, and then I construct my own version of that reality.